Ah, so you may have noticed that I'm outside. And that's because it's a wonderful freaking day. And you know what that means? It's a wonderful day to play Yu-Gi-Oh, bitches. Yo, buddy, it's your boy Veteran X with another Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links video, baby. And this time, we're talking about Sky Strikers leveling up at max level in the KC Cup, baby. Yeah, I really did it. I freaking smoked it. Also, if you want a full breakdown on how to play Sky Strikers and what some of their combos look like, then check out the two videos right here. I should have the thumbnails on the screen. I'll have the links for both of these videos in the pinned comment and the description. So be sure to check them out if you want to learn how to play Sky Strikers, baby. And I thank you so much for the support. No need for long YouTuber intro. Let's get right into it. So the first thing we're going to chat about is the deck real quick. You know, we got three Ray. Hey, you need three of them things. Ain't shit changed. Mm -mm, not right here. No, sir. Ain't a damn thing changed. Double Widow Anchor, play every copy of it. Come on, let's do this. I got some really great feedback from you guys on my previous two Sky Striker videos, and I have since leveled up. I finally got Terraforming and Rhoda, and I played a lot of games with both cards. And for me, I like Terraforming just a little bit more over Rhoda because it's a lot more flexible given a 20 card deck within Duel Links. Make no mistake, Rhoda. If you pick Rhoda over Terraforming, I'm not mad at you. If you pick Terraforming over Rhoda, I'm not mad at you. It's just that I get some unique utility and gameplay interactions thanks to Terraforming. I'll go into that a little bit uh, shortly. Got one copy of multi Roll. I felt like two was bricky, to be quite honest. One copy of multi Roll is just fine. It's searchable. And I'm telling you, there's no worse feeling than having two copies of multi Roll in your hand. Is tough it's really tough it's painful times man i swear i got one copy of jamming ways finally i don't know if you guys remember my previous videos but i had none but now i got one baby we got one of them things so i'm running it too easy ah some spicy tech monster gate this card is ridiculous and scotch strikers like it almost feels like i'm cheating playing this card that's how absurd monster gate is so the trick is you can use monster gate on ray and you know get that fit and dump all the spell cards you want to the graveyard to special summon another monster from your deck which is going to be ray okay but you can also steal your opponent's monsters by using shark cannon or widow anchor and you can play monster gate to tribute that monster you stole from your opponent to get the benefits of monster gate like what like bro like this is absolutely stupid man and i love resolving this card it's absolutely ridiculous all right three copies of the area zero absolutely need to run three copies of it and terraforming works because i can search it and also i'm gonna show you my other field spell card i'm running here summon breaker oh yeah <laughs> bro i feel so good dirty playing these cards like are you kidding me right now i play it for the psychological effect that it does on my opponent nothing feels better than watching your opponent just go straight to fucking in phase because they couldn't finish their tech genius combo or maybe their zombie combo and they're trying to play around it and it's like bro you're not gonna play Yu-Gi-Oh. i'm sorry bro i feel like an evil villain playing monster gate and summon breaker <laughs> but guess what they're legal in the game so i'm going to fucking use them it's that simple all right let's go back to the spells we got afterburners three of them things i love this card so freaking much and when you pop that bonus effect when it destroys the spell or trap it does not target so if your opponent does not immediately react to afterburners with the spelling trap on the field and they let the effect go through then you can pop one of their spelling traps for free and they can't do shit about it mm -mm -mm -mm. <clears throat> God damn, that's some good shit right now, boy. I love it, love it so much. And we're running through a shark cannon because this is a DD Crow in spell form. Yeah, and it's searchable, and it's a quick play spell, and it steals monsters. Like, what the fuck else do you want this thing to do? It's freaking awesome. I love it, and it's not once per turn. God dang, bro, that is amazing. One of my favorite things is to steal my opponent's ray from their graveyard and use it for shenanigans. Pretty good stuff. Using your opponent's uh, monsters for materials for your plays is just like peak Yu-Gi-Oh. That is amazing dueling, and I'm here for all of that. And now we're going to Ice Dragon Prison, my only trap in the deck. Ice Dragon Prison is non-targeting banish removal 
which is so freaking good. One of the most powerful cards in Duel Links. Not even just one of the most powerful traps, one of the most powerful cards, period. And it's really good. And anytime I build a deck, I'll see how I can fit Ice Dragon Prison into it. And so far, it's been treating me very well. And the extra deck, we got the Nightmare Package, of course. Well, just Phoenix and Unicorn. We got Ninjutsu for Link Plays. We got two copies of Shizuku. I don't think you need to run three. Two is just fine for me. Like, I've never went into the third copy of Shizuku. And to be honest, if you're summoning the second copy of Shizuku, you might be winning the game anyway. Like, it's not going to last that long. Like, let's be realistic. Roster Liger for OTK potential. You can uh, link into it and you can steal the attack of any link monster in any graveyard. That includes yours and your opponent. It's really that simple, man. Security Dragon for more link climbing plays. If I need a downward pointing arrow, sometimes that happens. I run into Security Dragon instead of Nightmare Phoenix. And I have Clipboard Genius because it just takes two machine monsters. And the Sky Striker Issue Deck monsters are, you guessed it, machine monsters. So it has some good synergy with there. And now, without further ado, let's go into some spicy replays, my fellow duelists. All right, the first duel in this showcase is against Yugi Moto. And you better believe that he's playing freaking Battle Chronicle. Yep, what a surprise here. Battle Chronicle is like the f one of my favorite decks to play against because it's so easy to read and like it's so linear that you can easily destroy these players like this deck is just so brain dead you literally just summon blue eyes hit the freaking yellow button and then you get card advantage like what kind of game design is that i'm fully convinced that battle chronicle players have dirt under their fingernails i'm not sorry about that all right so let's get into the replay all right so we had a very great open hand we had engaged the field spell and multi rolling hand and we drew the freaking shark cannon so yeah this hand's looking freaking amazing so let's go ahead and we're going to pluck another area zero you know what we doing baby and we play multi roll because you want to get that off early so that way you can build up that advantage in the end phase now i didn't have three spells engraved but now i do thank freaking goodness and then i play afterburners i got his bonus effect because i had bonus spells in the graveyard so i destroyed that freaking blue eyes alternative dragon and since i didn't have any uh monsters on the field book of moon couldn't do anything to me so it didn't hurt me now we're going to keep continuing with our plays here um i activate that freaking shark cannon to take alternative white dragon out of the graveyard because i'm about to do some real evil shit just watch <laughs> so I activate Area Zero's effect on that Blue Eyes alternative that I stole from Graveyard. I was able to pick up Jamming Ways from the deck and I get rid of the rest of my opponent's board. Look, he can't use that freaking uh, spell. Where is it? This suck soul. Oh my god, Successful Soul is ridiculous. Yeah, it sucks the soul right out of you. Look, even on the artwork, it's sucking the soul out of freaking Obelisk. All right. We're going to hit play. Um, I sent Area Zero to the graveyard so I can special summon Ray. And then you know we're going into Kagari because we're about to get some bonus effects off with Engage. I engage my enemy to do more than just normal summon and set two. Yeah. Engaging gameplay. And now, with thanks to Multi Rolls effect, I take Shark Cannon out of the graveyard and I also set Area Zero, baby. I should have went into shizuku but i was very confident that the yugi player was not going to do anything and i really wanted to speed through this duel so i didn't special summon shizuku and he goes into ultimate fusion i shark cannon the ultimate dragon i thought i could special summon um blue eyes ultimate dragon but you can't because it wasn't properly special summoned so i wasn't able to get it onto my field and now my opponent goes into battle um, I wait till battle phase to pop off my Widow Anchor because I don't want them to do any follow-up plays or anything like that. So I do. I steal his monster. And now it's the end phase. I get um, cards out of my graveyard. And I pick up Engage and Widow Anchor because we're about to do some filthy stuff. <laughs> you already know what's going on. So they use Suck Soul to get rid of uh, one card. And then with that, I summon Ray because that's what they did. They got rid of Kagari. Kagari floats. And then I go into another freaking area zero. And then I get rid of it to get this guy back on the field. And then from here, we just swing for game. Like, easy money. 
easy money right here, baby. Like, you cannot beat that. That's how you dominate a freaking player. Like, you just break their board, you destroy all of their confidence, and you swing for game. Like, you just, mm, you hit them right in their left eye, and you leave a mark. And then <laughs> their family's going to ask, why did they lose in a bar fight? And they have to explain, like, no, I didn't lose in the bar fight. I got my ass kicked in Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, that's what happens to you, you freaking Battle Chronicle players. All right, all right I'm going to chill on a Battle, Battle Chronicle uh, trash talk, man. You know, I, I'm a better person than that. That's not what I'm doing. So you thought I was done? Heck no, I got another Battle Chronicle duel to show you guys. Hey, I want to show you how I freaking embarrassed this dude. Like, come on, kid. Yeah, let's go into this freaking replay. You thought it was over? Heck no, I got something for you. Look at this. All right. Tell me that this is riveting game design. So this guy normal summons Dragon Spirit of White. He draws the freaking suck soul from deck and he freaking sets three. That's it. That was all. That's all he did. First of all, this guy's playing a 21 card deck. And then he And then this is all he does. And it's like, come on, like I cannot wait to ruin your evening. And that's exactly what happens because we draw from the deck and look at my hand. Oh my gosh, this thing is gas you know what gas stands for it stands for good as shit and that's exactly what we about to do full throttle baby first things first you know i'm playing multi-roll right off the bat and then right after that i'm going straight into area zero baby let's keep on going so from here i send multi-roll to the graveyard so i can get a search from the deck or an excavation from the deck rather i set another card and this is some real real cool stuff so I noticed that I didn't have three spells and traps in my graveyard, so the first card I wanted to play was Jamming Wave so I can get rid of one of my opponent's back row, right? Now, I have three spells and traps into the graveyard. Next, I play Afterburners because Afterburners has that bonus effect that destroys a spell or trap on the field. So instead of getting rid of Dragon Spirit of White first with Afterburners, I use Jamming Waves and then I go into Afterburners so that way I can take care of a monster and a piece of this fucker's back row. And guess what? That's exactly what we do. We hit Suck Soul. We get engaged to go off. We get to search from deck and draw from the deck. Activate Area Zero. And then I go right into Calgary. And guess what? We're doing Graveyard Recursion for Engage. And my opponent scoots because he realizes that <laughs> he cannot win this game. And you love to see it. I mean, you love to see it, man. I'm so sorry about that. And nothing against Battle Chronicle players. If you love Blue Eyes and Dark Magician and playing Battle Chronicle, more power to you. But I'm going to let these jokes fly. You ain't going to stop me. You're not going to silence me, baby. Them jokes are going to fly. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, let's go into the next duel. And now with this duel against Yami Bakura, this is my rank up match, which in KC Cup, baby. Yeah, this is what got me to the match level. So let's see how this duel went. And they are running Red Eyes Undead Reborn. We're about to have a very fun time here. I love playing against zombie players. Because I like seeing like the combos they can go through and trying to find that pivotal moment within it in order to interrupt their plays and try to use that to my advantage. I love playing against zombies. So they do all kinds of plays here. And what I do, the first card I play is Afterburners. So I want to get rid of some problem cards that my opponent has. I get rid of the uh, Red Eye Zombie and then I get rid of the Spell and Trap. Now, what I could have done is just go ahead and play Shark Cannon now to banish one of their monsters and then got the bonus effect from after from jamming ways but i want to save my two shark cannons for follow-up plays because i know for a fact that zombies love special summoning monsters from the graveyard and a lot of their monsters have graveyard effects so i'm thinking a little bit further ahead so i can react to my opponent instead of just using these two cards and i won't even i wasn't going to win the game on this turn anyway so there's no need to preemptively use the shark cannons. I see an argument for them, but for me personally, I just wanted to hold them until my opponent started doing plays and then I interact and I interrupt with them. That's just how I like to play Yu-Gi-Oh! And this is a very fun time. And I just keep on going. So I attack with Ray and then I a activate Ray's quick effect to tag out into Shizuku. Shizuku attacks and then I get the end phase search off of Shizuku and you no, I already know I'm picking up engaged. Like, come on, you know the drill right now. You know the freaking drill. He activates Zombie Reborn to set that card to the field and does not look like he did anything else there. So I'm just going to go ahead and go through my plays and then I'm going to go into Calgary to get more advantage with Engage. 
because I don't think my opponent is going to be able to do anything. And he hits Diddy Crow on jamming waves. Wow, you son of a gun. So I take his monster, I normal summon Ray, and then I go swing for game. I did, and I maxed out my KC Cup ranking, baby. You have no idea how good I felt getting this. Like, this was awesome. And now, since I got that, the next stop is King of Games, baby. You already know what time it is. Woo, and if you came this far in the video, you might as well subscribe, amigo. Like, come on. Let's have a good time out here. And if you like Alter Guys, I have a link for that video in the description as well. And now, with all of that out of the way, get out there and let's go play some freaking video games.